What do you do? I am a minister here in Uganda, responsible for disaster management and refugees. What drove you into this field? The president, having looked at my background, at some point when I was working, I was responsible for rescuing children who had been abducted by the Lord's Resistance Army, and then the army would rescue them and bring them to me in the northern part of the country. That is way back before I became a member of parliament. I have always thought humanitarian work is, is a calling. It's not just a job, you know, because it places you in a, a position where you have to wipe out the tears of those in distress uh, and then you have to repair broken hearts as it were. So, so that's what the president, I think so, and he decided to make me to be responsible for refugee management in Uganda because it is similar to what I used to do. What is your greatest source of energy? I sometimes go and receive refugees, say like we are managing a huge caseload of South Sudanese refugees running into my country here. When I go to a reception center and I find them in a very, very deplorable state, some have walked miles into the border of Uganda and then crossed into Uganda with the children. They have not been able to have access to food. But when I go there and meet them in that state and I'm able to mobilize groups that can say like prepare a hot meal for the children and make sure that those who may be in a situation that needs medical intervention, I organize medical teams to make sure that they are taken to places where they can undergo some emergency uh, assessment and treatment. And by the time I leave such a group, you find them waving at me with a smile. To me, that gives me the oil that makes me prepare for the next day. It means I have made a difference, however humble, in the life of these people. So that's what keeps me going. What was your most impressive childhood experience? I think basically it's to do with my father. You know, my father happened to be very humble, very, very humble. But uh, one day he, he told me whether we are rich. And I asked him, no, we are very poor. And that time he had hosted many people in our home, uh, despite our uh, the low level of income. Then he told me, no, we are not poor like I thought. That's my father telling me, he said, for as long as you have people around you, you are a rich man. What is the best advice you've received? I think the best advice that I got from my father is that your biggest wealth will be friends that you accumulate in the course of your life. It is what makes me feel I am complete. The fact that I have friends and friends that I have not accumulated because of my status. I've accumulated these friends because I've been able to make a contribution in their lives to me. It is, it is my source of strength and wealth. If it's not the same, what is the best advice you can give? I want a generation, particularly a generation that might come after me, to be able to bring the world together in a more, in a sense of trust, in a sense of love, and, and, and we, we, we diminish this racial divide that seems to be cropping up again. So the generation that is coming after me should be able to focus that. I, I have said this to my own children. My, my, my son, uh, because of my inspiration, has decided to marry a white girl and, and, and I've supported it. And the idea is we just want to bridge that difference. So they fell in love in the United States and, and my, I'm, I'm now a father-in-law of one of the American families. So, so he's a global citizen. He's no longer like a local man like me. My father was local, I, I'm a national leader, but my son is going to be a global citizen. What would you like to achieve in this lifetime? My contribution is to ensure that the peace that we have now is durable. Because we now host 1.3 million refugees. Those people have run here because their countries are unstable. And, and the, the testimonies they give are very chilling. 
So I always tell my citizens, as a minister responsible for refugees, we must do everything as Ugandans to ensure that we don't get into a situation where we become refugees ourselves. And in that direction, now that we have a bit of peace, can we make this peace durable? So I work around the clock to make that happen. What brings us together? The humanity. We, we are both human. <laughs> you might be different, your color and mine, but the same blood. We, we, and then there is also one thing. I, I, I like what Obama said recently, former president. He said hatred can be learned. Nobody is born hating. He also thought, he said even love can be learned. Nobody is born real leader. So we all are the same. We are all good people, <laughs> but except the environment sometimes makes us different, the environment in which we are raised. But, but, but we are all potentially good people. So I want that goodness to be manifested in all of us and, and, and so that we really can make the world a good place to be in. That is my aspiration and that's my dream. How I wish I could see that you know, before I leave this world. What makes us human? Human is, is, is that feeling or that one we are different from other animals. The rest of the animal kingdom have no chance to really make friends. But for us, because of our ability to think, our ability to communicate, we are different. But sometimes the beast in us is something that is hidden but can also be developed by the surrounding. So the human part of us is what we are born with. You know, that feeling that me and you can communicate now. And then that feeling that you can think and I can think. And because of our thinking, we can transform our well-being. What is your strongest conviction? The situation in the world today is bad. It's bad in the sense that personally, as a minister responsible for refugees, millions of people have been uprooted from their homes. But even in that bad state, it is not hopeless. I'm very convinced. The situation is bad, but not hopeless. We have a responsibility and we ha I'm very convinced we can fix this bad situation and make this planet uh, good again. I am very impressed with the developments that are taking place around the world. I'm also very impressed with some of the champions around the world who are beginning to know that together if we hold the hands, we, we can confront the next century with a lot of confidence. And, and so that's what uh, makes me think the future is bright. The current might be bad, but not hopeless. But the future is bright. What is the most courageous decision you've made? There was a, 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 a warlike group here, you know, called the Lord's Resistance Army. It used to kill, abduct, and rape children. So they attacked the eastern part of the country, which happened to be where I, I am born from. The constitution of Uganda allows the raising of an auxiliary force, like what the Americans call the National Guard. So for me, I couldn't watch them raping my mother, raping my parents, and, and abducting my, my, my children and daughters. I, I abandoned my office and went and took advantage of that provision of the Constitution and raised a force of 7,014 men and women and requested the government to give me military support. And with that, we were able to drive LRA out of Eastern Uganda. And in the process, I rescued close to 12,000 children. Those are what we call formal abducted children. It was a very risky venture because the LRA at that time had been heavily armed by the government of Sudan, the Karatum government. So I, it was like fighting a state and a state. And in the, but, but I raised, I did that not because I was brave, not because I, 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 I like war. But I did that because I wanted my mother, I wanted other women safe. I wanted children safe. Some of now, them now have gotten a chance to go to school. Some have reached university. And each day I move in the country, they tell me, you are the one who saved us. You are the one who saved us. Uh, while it was a painful action at that time for me to take, it is now reason for me to breathe a sigh of relief and happiness that at least I made a contribution and I saved my country. 
What does home mean to you? First of all, I love Uganda so much. You know, I love the rest of the world, but I love Uganda so much. I am lucky to be born here. I'm lucky to be raised here. I was raised in a very impoverished environment in Eastern Uganda, but where people are very rich in culture and, and, and hospitality, even in the face of their poverty. So home is, is Uganda, and home is a place where I'm appreciated, and, and home is a place where I think when I make a contribution, I see some transformation. Who are you? Musa Ichweru, like I said, uh, Musa Ichweru, I am now 50, uh, in November, I'll be making 53 years in November this year. Uh, so I am a member of parliament uh, for, for, for Amuria County in Eastern Uganda, and also a minister, like I said, responsible for emergencies and disaster management. I'm a father of seven Africans produce so many children. I want them to have a foundation here but I want them to have a global outlook when, when they reach university so that they look at the world as their family, as their home, not, not the way I look at the, Uganda as my home. I want them to look at the world. That's what makes me sacrifice my resources to, to have them get international education. <laughs>